push. This time we're going to call the police. Well, Butch, why don't you have a seat? Thank you. What is that? A skull. Oh, no. Another one? That's what I said. This is me. Butch, sit down. This time, I really think you should call the police. I mean, this place is turning into a graveyard. Wait a minute. Oh, of course. A graveyard. Why didn't I think of that before? Aunt Tilly, not the coffin again. It's not about the coffin. I remember when I was a little girl. The story about this house. What story? Aunt Tilly, I've never heard this before. What? Uncle Kirk. Shh, buddy. Aunt Tilly, please, continue. Well, they said though I'm not really very sure. But they said, it was never really written down, that this house was built on the grounds where pirates were buried. Hello. Hello. Shh. Aunt Tilly, you were saying pirates? Oh. It was so long ago. I must have been five or six. But there was this legend or something about three pirates and they fought they fought over a wonderful buried treasure treasure, treasure. gosh me Them killed the other two and, and they were buried here. That's neat. This is unbelievable. Now, wait a minute. Pirates? Mm hmm. Three of them. Mm hmm. Two killed by the other. Two buried here. Yes. And that skull belongs to the second pirate. Oh. And there's treasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, what sort of treasure is it? 50,000 golden doubloons. <sighs> Wait a minute. What if somebody else had heard this story? And what if somebody's been digging around this property looking for that treasure? It wasn't me. Of course not, dear. We know you didn't do it. What was that? Sound like something from the kitchen. I'll go check. <laughs> now wait a minute. Uncle Kirk! Excuse me! May I help you? Um, you want your key? I don't live here! No. Oh. Uh, well, I can help you anyway. Is Mr. Hankin around? Well, he's outside at the moment, but I'm sure I could help you. I seriously doubt that. Well, I came to take Miss Baines over to the restaurant in my new car. So could you ring her room, please? That won't be necessary. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. It's really nice of you to come over and pick me up this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I really appreciate this, but... You aren't going to mention your cousin again, are you? Not another word. As far as I'm concerned, the case is closed. Good. You see, he got engaged. Oh, how nice. Yes, I'm very happy about it. However, I have this nephew, and he's such a hulk. Hunk. 
Well, whatever. But I think you'd really like them. It's really smart. I don't know, Abe. It's rather expensive. It doesn't really sound like a sound investment. Oh, look. It's a surefire investment. Trust me. Now, well, if I remember correctly, the restaurant was a surefire investment. Oh, uh, well, um, that was Mabel's idea. And, uh, the oil well? Well, you know how oil is today. And the, uh, artificial diamonds? Forget that. Put it right out of your mind. Well, I, I don't know about this electric car. Oh, look, we'll be on the ground floor of a surefire investment, an electric car. Look, Eve, um, I got your junior high to mow the lawn, so, uh, you'll be in all day, right? Yeah, I'll be in my wine cellar. Your wine cellar? I didn't know you had a wine cellar. No, I don't. I'm digging one. Um, I'll call you, okay? Okay, bye. Junior. <laughs> Can I help you? Yes. See that lawn out there? Where? Out there. You and I are going to go outside, and I'm going to show you how to mow the lawn. Wow! That's, that's neat! Oh, I can't wait. behind the counter, so I decided to put my keys away for myself. I see. Miss Valentine, being in the newspaper business, I have a lot of friends all over the country. Oh, that's very nice, Miss Ross, but I'm a busy woman. Many of my connections are in Washington. In fact, I just returned from Washington. Margot Valentine. Margot Valentine. So what are you trying to say, Miss Ross? Lovely name quite different from Margot Johnson. Margot Johnson, does that name ring a bell, Miss Valentine? Margot Johnson, an agent for the FBI. But you've got to be kidding. I'm sorry, Uncle Kirk. I just thought you would want to know about me. But I didn't even want to know about the first dead mouse. Well, I thought that was so brave of you, bud. Would you knock it off? But I thought that was so brave of you, bud. Suzanne, that sounds so stupid. Yeah, stupid. Yeah. What did you say your name was? Patsy. Patsy. Bud. I know. Bud. Next time, use your head. You get everybody upset. I'm sorry. So am I. Excuse me. Kirk, excuse me. I understand that in some cases you might have worked on that finding a dead mouse might be considered crucial evidence. But... Butch. Yes, sir? There's a seat right over there, and one right over there, for that matter. Yeah. Well, why don't you have a seat? Yes, ma'am. Where's Aunt Tilly? Aunt Tilly? What do you mean, where's Aunt Tilly? She was there a minute ago. Fiorella, where is she? I don't know. But we just left the room for a minute. I didn't see her leave. What do you mean you didn't see her leave? You were here, weren't you? Yes. Dennis, weren't you here? Yes. I... I... Dennis, maybe you saw her. You couldn't have gone out this way. 
Oh, yes, she did. Excuse me. <laughs> Aunt Tilly. Aunt Tilly. Here, I'll sit down. I don't like to be interrupted. No. Interrupted? Aunt Tilly, where have you been? Outside. Oh. Now, let me see. Oh, 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 yes, I the pirate. Pirates. Three of them. Oh, yes, dear. You always pay attention, don't you? Now, three pirates. One killed the other two, and they and they buried the treasure on this property. 50,000 golden doubloons. Why haven't I ever heard this story, though? Why haven't I ever heard it? Do you believe in it, Tilly? Of course. I don't know. Wouldn't it be exciting, though? Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe it. Why not? Yeah, why not? Well, um, because somebody would have found it by now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He does have a point there, you know. Not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily? How could they possibly have built this house made the foundation and even dug a basement without finding it. Maybe it wasn't under the house. It could have been buried in the backyard. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, maybe they couldn't find it because they didn't have the map. The map? The map? A map? What map? The map to the treasure. Is Fiorell the only one that listens to me? What map? The treasure map. There's always a map. Aunt Tilly, do you know where this map is? Well, not, not exactly, <laughs> but, but I have heard. And what have you heard? Well, at the edge of this property, there are a couple of headstones. Oh, those old things? They've been there for who knows how long. Yes, well, they say that if you rearrange the letters on those headstones that you can find out exactly where the treasure is, is hidden. I wonder what got them all excited. What are you trying to say, Miss Ross? It's very simple. What I'm saying is you're an FBI agent. And before I print this in my newspaper, I'd like to know exactly what you're doing in Oakdale. Suppose I deny it. But you won't. Why not? Because I can prove it. Assuming you are correct. I am correct. Assuming you are correct. What if I am on a very important case? Then I'll just have to find out about it. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? I'm not at liberty to discuss this case. Why not? I'm sorry, I can't help you. I'm sorry, too. Excuse me, I have a story to write. Wait. Give me more time. Why should I? Because if you do, I'll give you a story. An exclusive story. Much better than the one you have right now. Look, it's a great investment, and it only costs around $1,000. Look, Abe, I've got a lot of things on my mind right now. Junior just drove the lawnmower three blocks down the street and crash through a telephone pole. But before the police arrive and give me a fine, I've got to go collect him and the lawnmower and bring them back. Uh, Miss Ross, Miss Valentine, is there anything I can do to help you? No, I don't think so. 48 hours, then I publish. Fair enough. Good day. Uh, excuse me, I have a lawnmower to collect. Valentine, 
How would you like to get in on the ground floor of the electric car business? No. Excuse me. I need a drink. When I was 21, I met my first beau. He was so handsome. His name was Herman. Hmm. But he had no future. When I was 22... Oh, there's someone at the door. I'll get it. Why don't I get somebody else to get it so you can sit down and I'll finish my story? I'll take care of it. Boy. Now, I'm sure you two have a lot to talk uh, about. No, we don't. <laughs> Butch, you're interrupting. Is there anything I can do to help you? And Tilly, I have to collect the paper. <clears throat> well, don't look at me. I haven't gotten my allowance yet. <sighs> I wasn't dreaming of that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Butch. I'll go call Leslie and have her bring the money here. Who's your friend? This is Bernice. She lives down the road. She's going to be taking over my paper app for a while. Oh? Why? I've decided I need a break. I'm a little burned out. Burned out? How big is this paper route? I have 15 papers, not including the sisters that live next to each other. I think Leslie's in the kitchen. Why don't you go into the kitchen and collect your money and then get yourself a nice big tip and then go have some milk and cookies. Thank you, Aunt Tilly. <laughs> oh, now, where were we? Twenty-two. Oh, yes. My second bell, his name was Alvin. He was a paper hanger. Hi, Aunt Tilly. Hi, bud. Hi, Miss Ross. Would you like a cup of coffee? Or how about a cup of tea? Or even a few cookies? Well, don't move and I'll be right back. Aunt Tilly, where's Leslie? Oh, she's in the kitchen, but you can't bother her because she's paying Butch. Have I ever told you about Alvin? Oh, yes, the paper hanger. Oh, you remembered. Yes, uh, a good reporter uh, always listens to details. Here, sit down. I'll get you a cup of tea. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And there was George. Or was it John? I always get those two mixed up. Tips. Abe, good morning. What are you in such a good mood for? Am I in a good mood? Oh, I get it. You had yourself a little drinky-poo this morning. Better than that. What could be better than that? I'm in such a great mood. Can you guess why? You found a million dollars. Better than that. You won the lottery. Better than that. What could be better than that? Junior's going to be gone for an entire month. Oh, wonderful. And I have a wonderful idea of my own. What? Why don't we go back to my place for a drink? Hey, I don't know. Oh, come on, Tibbsy. Why not? We could have two drinks. Mr. Hankin, Mr. Hankin, my phone is broken. Why is there never anything in this place? Johnson. Yes, I know. Listen, a reporter's found out about me. Yes, we have 48 hours. We have to move things up. I know, I realize that. Listen, we'll have to move tonight. Tonight. We have no other choice. You heard. I did.
someone has found out about me. But not me? No, and I'm counting on that. Alvin! Fiorello. No, no, not Fiorello. Alvin. Oh, the paper hanger. Why, yes, you remember. What did you... Aunt Tilly, they can't find anything. Well, it's not my fault. Excuse us for that knock. What do you want? Fiorello, that's not nice. Yes, Fiorello, you should always be pleasant <laughs> and have good manners. Oh, I'm sorry. You were saying? Uh, we weren't saying anything. Um, we just got back from dinner. We were wondering if they found anything. No, we haven't found anything. We haven't found any message on the gravestones. As a matter of fact, we haven't found the gravestones. This is really strange. For as long as I can remember, those gravestones have been there. Why would they just disappear all of a sudden? Aunt Tilly, do you remember last 4th of July at the picnic? I think I remember seeing him then. Yes. When your cousin, what's his name, with the skinny knees, tripped over them. Yeah. The thing I can't figure out is why they disappear now, just when we're looking for them. Wait a minute. The picnic. I took pictures of that picnic. Wonderful. No, good pictures. Some of them had the gravestones in them. Now if I could just find those pictures. We can read the inscriptions on them. Exactly. Leslie. 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 Bud. Suzanne. Leslie, is she all right? Or, I think she's really I hurt. I didn't do anything. I think she's really hurt. Suzanne. Come on. Oh, she's coming oh, around. Shh, shh. Suzanne? Oh, what happened? It was under the bushes. What? What happened? It, it was horrible. What was? Just let her take her time. It was a body. Oh. Not another one. Oh. Aunt Tilly, wait a minute. I found the two skulls, right? Yes. It wasn't just a skull. It wasn't even a skeleton. It was a whole body. Where was this? It, it was under the bushes. Out back. Are you sure? All right, well, let's go. Leslie, call the police. Okay, take care of yeah. right out of the Um, Aunt Tilly, why don't you get some water for her? Yeah. I'm gonna try and get her yes. on Maybe she's moving Take your time. Hello. Um. 
we like two rooms? Um, the two of us, we like two rooms. Uh, oh, oh, two rooms, certainly. Um, adjoining? Um, second. Uh, oh, damn, beautiful this time of year. 206 and 208. You need any help with your luggage? No. Which key do you want? Does it matter? I don't know. Give me a key. Good morning, Mr. Hank. Good morning. May I have my key, please? Uh, did you meet a new guest? They just checked in. No, I haven't had the pleasure. My key, please? Mm. Oak Deal's beautiful this time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, the Oakdale West, right across the street. Should be open in about uh, five minutes. Oh, thank you. There's a, a restaurant. I heard. There'll only be a few more minutes, Abe. We might as well pick up Sally, being as it's on the way. Could you please call Sally's room and tell her that we're here? Uh, certainly. Tibbs, it's Kate's car. Her brand new car. It, it's in the shop for some service, so I had to go and pick her up. Oh, and that was very nice of you too, Abe. I don't believe that. I had to go all the way down to your house, then pick you up, and then bring you all the way back here. Did you want to do the cooking all by yourself? Oh, I guess not. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, could you bring Sally's room? We're in kind of a hurry. Certainly. This is the Oakdale Motel. We need one paper here. Hi. Good morning, Mrs. Sullivan. Good morning, Miss Moulton. Good morning. This is Bernice. She's my assistant. Oh, isn't that sweet? He has an assistant, too. Doesn't everybody? Well, did you call her room? Uh, there doesn't seem to be any answer. Hmm. Is her key there? No, it isn't. Well, uh, maybe she's at the restaurant already. Why don't we go see? No. All right. Mr. Hank, is Junior around? No, he isn't. Well, you see, Junior owes me three weeks for the paper, and I was wondering. I didn't think so. This is your only problem in the room. Mr. Hankin, my phone is broken, and I have to make a very important phone call. You can use this phone. Thank you. This is a personal call. Well, I had work to do outside anyway. This is Johnson. Listen, Baines has disappeared. She's gone. I don't know. I need some backup. Meet me in about a half an hour at the restaurant across the street. The Oakdale West. Yes, and hurry. She's on her way. in charge here, remember? But your uncle's not here right now, and I am. 
By the way, where is your uncle? Uh, he's with Leslie out back with the body. Hello, officer. Come on in. Would you like to um, talk with these people first? Or would you rather go out back and check the... Uh, follow me. Where are you going? Bud's going out back. I know that, but the body is too. Bud will protect me. Bud can protect me too. They seem to be all worked up by all this. Fiorello, you're not upset by this, are you? I don't know. Are you at Tilly? Not a bit, dear. Not a bit. How come? Because I know whose body it is. You can fix a phone before I left. Probably just a loose wire. I'm not and missing. You can fix the phone. No, I never was. Just, All right, just listen to me for a minute. I'm beginning to wonder about Johnson. Well, she's got that reporter on her tail. I don't even think she has any valuable evidence. Okay, but I think it's about time that we just phase her out of this. I could wrap this case up if you could just get rid of Margot Johnson. Well, I don't know. Why don't you just reassign her to another case? She hasn't established her cover very well. No one will ever notice she's missing. Okay, next is the kitchen, and it's this way. Wait, no, we just came that way. I think it's this way. Oh, yes, it is this way. Is it this way? You can help by being quiet. Suit yourself. Hi there. Uh, there's a gazebo. Uh, Right this way? Right this way. Compared to all the rest of this somebody. Where's your sister? She's over there at, at the restaurant. What happened? Well, we were eating and all of a sudden it just hit her. Then it hit us. Your keys. Thanks.
You guys are a guy with a lot of guts coming back here after what you pulled. Well, I knew it was the wrong thing to do, but I decided it was the only th way I could get the money out of you. How do you feel about it? I thought it was pretty good. So what brings you guys back to the scene of the crime? I mean, you haven't looked over at the restaurant? People are staggering out of the restaurant. Uh, yes, the uh, Clancy sisters were just in. Two of them, you mean. Holly had to go to the hospital. Uh, you know them by their names? Well, I met them over there and I <coughs> introduced myself and... Yeah, you should have seen them. <clears throat> Hi, Tibbs. Hi, Mina. Hi, Butch. Please. You didn't need anything while you were over there, did you? No, don't worry. What happened? Well, Kate never showed up for work, and we never found Sally, so the only one there who could cook was Abe. But he hasn't been in the kitchen in a while. He's only been bartending. What, what happened? Well... Oakdale Hotel. Oakdale Hotel. Oh, hi, Kate. Kate, give me the phone. Kate, where have you been? Why aren't you at work? We've been looking all over for you. What? What kind of answer is that? No, this is not Tibbs, it's Mabel. Why weren't you at work? We've got a whole restaurant full of customers and they're all... Co Sally's not there to cook. You know who's cooking? A, right. They're all coming out sick. I'm afraid the health department's gonna come out now and close us down. Where were you? What were you doing all the way up there? You should have been at work. What? Oh. Forget it. I don't want to hear it. What? Oh, no. All right, give me the directions. Cotman Avenue. You have your car? Yes. Go get the keys. Uh-huh. How many lights? All right, make a left on the Calvert. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Where exactly are you? That's not near Cotman. Okay, uh-huh. Make a right... Devro to Golden State Boulevard? I know that is. Uh, hold on. Kate, yeah, this is Tibbs. Where are you? Lawler Academy. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, I'll pick up in about 10 minutes. Okay, bye. That's nowhere near Cotton. That's what I told her. Oh, uh, since I'm picking up your cook, you can watch my counter. Sounds fair. To take over the counter. I got it. My paper. Bernice, take over the counter. Um, Tibbs had to go pick up Kate, so he told Mabel to take over the counter. But Mabel couldn't because she had to go to the restaurant. So she told Butch to take over. But Butch couldn't because he had to go, you know. So they told me to. I don't want to talk about it. What's I'm going to say? I don't want to talk about it. It was an honest mistake. It was a stupid mistake. Look, the lady downtown has bad handwriting. You can see that 313 looks a lot like 318. What? You mean we're in the wrong house? Mm, yes, but the house we were supposed to see looks a lot like this. I hope it has better furniture. Yeah, is it the house that we saw when we drove up? No, I think it's mm, that way. Mr. Stevenson, this is ridiculous. At first, I thought maybe Miss Barrett put the house up for sale without telling me. But now that I find out it's only a stupid mistake, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, okay, Miss Barrett. Miss Ross. What did it say, Miss Barrett? This is a nice house. Yes, I agree. Especially the upstairs. Uh, folks? Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Dan. Don't leave me, Melanie. Melanie? Yes, Suzanne? Uh, have you seen Mr. Baxter? No, Suzanne, and I haven't seen Buddy either. Want him? Uh, no, thank you. I don't even like whatever that is. Oh, really? Station. Oh, what happened? Well, they took Margot Valentine into one of the rooms. Interrogation and, room. Yeah. And they took my uncle into another one. And after a while, he came out and told me to take a cab back here. Then he picked me up at the corner. Uh, did Margot have a gun? Yes. Uh, did they arrest her? I don't know. But something fishy is going on down there. There certainly is. Marco Valentine had a gun. She wasn't after me. Suzanne, have you seen your sister lately? <coughs> no, but I did see her this morning. It's probably nothing. But your uncle should be here soon. Unless he has something charged against him. Otherwise, he'd be here soon. Your uncle doesn't have a criminal record, does he? Kirk. Did Kirk. you know she was an FBI agent? Well, I wasn't 100% sure. Well, oh, that's good. I'm a private investigator from out of town. I take Margot Valentine down to the station, ask him to book her. She flashes her badge, slips out the back, and I stay there for an hour and a half. Buddy, pack your things. As far as I'm concerned, this case is closed. Kirk! Uh, Mr. Baxter! We don't even know whose body it is yet! Where's Leslie? Uh... Uh... Do you think they're coming back? I don't know. There's still a lot of questions unanswered. Yeah, like whose body it is. Ah! But Aunt Tilly knows the answer to that one. Okay, we'll be right there. Abe, Mabel, we're gonna have to shut down the restaurant for a little while. Close the restaurant? Why? Look, it was just a little problem. I'm sure my cooking will get better. No, that's not the difficulty. We just have to get right over to the Barrett's house. Why? You'll find out when we get there. Let's go. Hi, can I have my bill? How did you make out with your friend? Hmm. Can I have my bill, please? Uh, sure, just give me a few minutes. Well, you know, maybe we'll have better luck in the next town. Yeah, I don't know. Mr. Uh, Hankin. Hankin. May we have our bills, please? Uh, sure, can you just wait a few minutes? Well, just a second. We'd like to get out of here as soon as possible. All right. I don't believe it's clean. First of us, and then... Mr. Hank and me and Bernice are sorry about the money we oh, did. Can you just wait a minute, Butch? Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Margot Johnson from the FBI. And this is my bag. <gasps> You'll find that this officer here there's three patrol cars waiting outside. Men, women, and children. Let's go. But, uh... No buts about it. Move it! <coughs> Myself. Now, Tilt. Of course you
to marinate the meat before you put on the seasoning. Of course. So, so I marinated it for about an sugar. hour. And I, I go crazy when there's nothing to do. And then I put it in the oven at 300 degrees. Stand. Wow. I looked in my cookbook and it said to put it in 100 degrees. Here, I'll get it it just down for oh. Suzanne, what are we going to do now? Well, well that I is. guess we could eat. Fine. Miss Barrett, I say come back in. I just want to say that I'm sorry for the intrusion. Melanie, do you know what he's talking about? Unfortunately, I do. Excuse me. And now so do I. I thought you left. Not quite. Seems I've run into an old friend. Move it! I told you I don't want to go. Is everybody here? Not quite. Kirk, what's going on? You'll soon find out. Here they come now. What is this? Well, I think it's a little melodramatic. I think we're going to finally get to the bottom of this mystery. Wow, neat. But whose body is it? I know, I know. I'm, I'm sure you do. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Aunt Tilly, would you like to tell them? It's the policeman. The policeman. Detective Saunders. So that's where he went. But how did she know? She didn't kill him, did she? Of course not. Just the very idea. No, Aunt Tilly figured it out when she found out the body was missing from her coffin. Excuse me, Sally, how do you know all this? She's an FBI agent, too. Oh. And you hired her. I wonder if she couldn't cook. Who moved the body? They did. They did? They're just kids. That's right. But it wasn't their idea. I suppose somebody paid them a great deal of money. It was all his it's idea. your idea. No, it wasn't my idea. on you two. Who paid them? My sister. Leslie? Yeah. Who is she? Yeah, where is Leslie? That's the easy part. But she's running for mayor. Um, not anymore. She eloped with the senator. <laughs> she eloped with the senator? Eloped? She didn't even tell me. I'm her sister. She didn't even tell me. All's fair in love and war. I didn't see any coffin. Quiet down. Yes, ma'am. Kate, she's the only one not here. Kate and her new car are in the repair shop. At least we still got our cook. Sometimes. I can't figure this out. Actually, it's quite simple. Although it did take me some time to figure it out. All I had to do was gain the confidence of these two. Get them to trust me. Then all I had to do was figure out just who was responsible and exactly what it was he was after. Who? What? The gold. <clears throat> what gold? The pirate story. It was true. The gravestones, there was lots of gold under it. And unfortunately for Detective Saunders, he found the, the killer digging up the gold. Therefore, he was killed. Really? See, up until a short time ago, even the Barretts didn't know about it. But somebody, 
somebody very interested in real estate, managed to figure it out. And unless I miss my guess, that someone is planning to take a little trip with the money. Yes. Isn't that right, Mr. Hogan? Oh. Oh. I... I didn't want to kill him. He, he saw me digging up the gold. Yes. I didn't want to get caught. Yes, I'm sure. Bring the kids. Let's go. Excuse me, but who gets all the gold? Why are you doing it, Tilly? And our bill. If you're interested in learning how to act or use the latest in professional video equipment, come to CineKid, a nonprofit organization where kids ages 7 to 17 learn this and more. If you're interested in the communication arts, visit CineKid at 129 Turwood Road in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, or call us at 659-4696. Come to CineKid and share the dream. For more information, call 659-4696. them $125,000. It wasn't my fault. I did everything just like you told me. Why don't I own the place? It was the old lady. She, she doesn't have the authority.
Through with him, he won't be able to tell what he was. 